Good morning and welcome to worship at Bethany Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you decided to tune in this morning. And as always, we will uh, trust that the Spirit will move in all kinds of ways today uh, to give us some hope for the journey ahead. As we begin our worship service, just a few announcements. Um, clearly, you've tuned in and you found us on Facebook, but immediately following this service, we have a Zoom worship service that begins about 10 after 11 a.m. And um, it's a little more of an informal service, usually about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, we kind of usually discuss a few questions that I ask, and then we share joys and concerns and enter into some time of prayer. So we hope that you will uh, join us for that service as well. And as always, for that Zoom link, as well as our Tuesday Bible studies at 11 a.m. via Zoom, and our Wednesday 11 a.m. Zoom check-ins, all of those links can be found on our webpage at bethprez.com. So please join us, we love to see new faces. It's still kind of remarkable that we are doing all of these um, interactions and the way we are connecting Digitally, it's interesting, it can be frustrating, but we're, ha we're thankful for that option. It's good to have Natalia, as always, playing beautiful music for us, and uh, Jim Guida is videoing for us, so we're thankful we have a small skeleton crew today. Just a reminder um, that some time ago we sent out an email, and some of you may have received a uh, snail mail piece of mail, asking for folks to send in contacted in contact information updated contacts maybe an emergency contact should we need to reach you and we can't do so so just a general reminder to turn those in when you get a chance again save the date on march 11th it's a thursday there's going to be a virtual fundraiser for the uh, ssip group who there are just in case you don't know their numbers have about doubled since last year. They were, I think, I believe they were serving between five and 6,000 people per month. That number is now pretty regularly over 10,000 people a month. So it's an important ministry. We hope you'll show, show up for that event. And also, you'll be hearing word soon that probably in the next week or so, we will resume our book study on how to be an anti-racist. And this group has really found it to be a meaningful time. We meet every other uh, Wednesday, but we'll send more information out on that soon. So let us be together in worship and in prayer. And as we do so, let us be reminded of our baptismal covenant. Let us pray. God, in baptism, we are reminded of the promises that you make to us to be our God and we, your people, and that you will stand by us no matter what comes our way. We also are reminded of the promises that we make to one another, that we will be uh, a family to one another, to those within the walls of this church and to those outside the walls of this church, that we will help one another along the paths in good times and in bad times. And God, it's promises like these that give us something to cling to when the way is rocky. And we are so glad for this day that you have made where we can gather from the comfort and safety of our own homes. We can inventory the goodness all around us, the promises of our faith, and have hope for the coming weeks, months, and years. In Jesus' name, amen. I now invite you on Facebook to pass the peace with one another, check in. We always like to see who's in attendance, folks then that we might need to reach out to. Um, so please join us in passing of the peace. And the Lord be with you. And as you're doing that, we are going to sing together, I've Got Peace Like a River.
text today is from the book of Romans, and it's a really amazingly hopeful text. Listen to what God's Spirit is saying to the church this day. It's from Romans 8, verses 31 through 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, Will he not with him also give up everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? If it is God who justifies, who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your word, which we gather around now. As always, we need your word. We need it to give us hope. We need it to give us perspective, and we need it to challenge us in those times when we need to be challenged. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your name. 
Amen. I have some fun news to share. Rowena and I put in an offer on a home in the pocket neighborhood, and it was accepted. We don't want to jinx the deal, but we're hopeful that we'll soon have a place to call our own here in Sacramento, and that's exciting. During my first interview with Bethany's PNC, the Pastor Nominating Committee, I shared my longing to be a homeowner once again. I had owned a home in Wisconsin when I was pastoring there. Like most people, I love having my own little castle. A safe, comfortable place where I can work on art and music projects, I can have a garden, and I can host family and friends. And indeed, my circle is very eager to see Sacramento, and so now I'll have a place for them to stay. Many, though, would argue it's a rather volatile time to be buying a house. Who knows what's going to happen with our economy in the coming months? The stock market is long overdue for a sobering adjustment. Wildfires seem to be a new season to deal with here in California. Bethany's session is still figuring out what is fiscally feasible over the coming years. But Rowena and I have talked it through, and we just felt it was time for a leap of faith. We think it's a risk worth taking. We're especially feeling a need to have some sense of stability in the midst of continued turbulence in our nation, in our communities, in our churches, and in our own lives. After Tuesday night's big storm, I bet you had a lot of limbs down where you were at, we've been reminded yet again just how life can change in an instant, throwing us all for a loop. I don't need to remind us all of the chaos we've been navigating as of late. The many disturbances we've been facing as a nation and those we struggle with privately are so heavy. They have a way of absorbing so much of our energy and our time. We grow anxious searching for a light at the end of the tunnel. Our problems are big and they're complicated, and unfortunately, there seems to be very few easy fixes anymore. Sometimes we feel paralyzed about the future, unable to make even the smallest of decisions. And at other times, we give in to a sense of hopelessness and abandon our dreams that normally give us something to look forward to. Interestingly, the earliest Christians found themselves in tumultuous conditions not too different than our own. After Jesus' death and resurrection, small groups of disciples gathered to discuss when Jesus would return. They also considered what Jesus' life, death, and resurrection meant while they forged ahead with the ministries of Jesus, caring for orphans and widows, feeding people, prayer, and proclaiming salvation in the midst of dark days. And the environments for these fledgling communities were harsh. There were regular backlashes from Roman authorities. Christians were jailed and even killed. They met in secret, fearing for their lives, and yet they persisted in their faith. These small churches also encountered a lot of internal turmoil as well. The earliest Christians were Jewish Christians. They had been raised as Jews and observed Jewish traditions and practices. But as time went on, more and more Gentiles were joining these churches, and there were many arguments about how such communities were to follow Jesus. There were questions about what food was to be eaten, what to be eaten or avoided, or who should be included or excluded, even whether or not circumcision should still be practiced. Many of these conflicts are addressed in Paul's letter to the church in Rome, Galatia, and Ephesus. Paul instructs these Christians and ourselves that all of these little arguments are just that. They're inconsequential. 
Our faith is so much bigger than our petty disagreements and even bigger than the sweeping changes underway in our societies. Paul reminds us of our unity as sisters and brothers in Christ. He teaches us that we all share a common lineage springing forth from God's ancient covenant with Abraham and Sarah, which means God's covenant applies to us and all believers. Paul declares to the disciples back then and to us today that we need to be focused on the incredibly good news of Jesus Christ. Paul argues that at the end of the day, no matter what comes our way, God is for us. Today's text recalls God's master plan of redemption for humanity. The victory of love over hate, of life over death. Talk about great news. This bold declaration of the unstoppable love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our lives are held in God's hands and no one else's. Paul lists these big factors that do play a role in our lives, both earthly and celestial, but announces that they will still pale in comparison to the supremacy of God's eternal love. Nothing, nothing, nothing will ever be able to separate us from God's love. The good news of Jesus Christ should be our anchor in the midst of these many storms. They may scare us as well as bruise and batter us, but still we have the promise that in this world and in the next, we will not be separated from the Lord. Like every year preceding 2021, we'll have a lot of ups and downs. Things can get a whole lot worse and they can get a whole lot better. But whatever happens, we hold fast to our faith that God is for us. And all those other forces will not prosper. This good news encourages us then to keep living joyfully, to seek abundant life, to plan and dream boldly. The gift of life is so precious, and it's our faith that helps us to cherish it. Our first female Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, came out of a traumatic childhood. Her father was a Czech diplomat, and they fled as refugees to England during World War II, where she then survived the Blitzkrieg. Her family returned to Czechoslovakia after the Nazis were defeated, but soon the communists took over, and her life was turned upside down once again. Her family managed to escape to the United States. Madeline passed through Ellis Island in 1948 at the age of 11. She would go on to lead a distinguished career in diplomacy and politics, always a tireless advocate on behalf of refugees around the globe. Her life is remarkable, but it can also be argued that there are millions of examples of people who have survived harrowing times and who managed to go on to lead fulfilling lives and even bless many along the way. I'm sure that each of you has stories from your own family and ancestry who held on to their faith in spite of terrible obstacles. You are the result of their faith and hope. We are the result of God's promise of unending love. The world is still full of so much goodness, despite any temporary struggles we may face. Yes, we are very tired of the pandemic, but soon it will be a distant memory. God has much bigger plans for all of us, we're sure. May our ancestors and all of the many saints of the faith encourage us to hold fast to our faith during these stormy times. May we have the capacity for perspective and broad vision to see God is very much alive in the world and creating all sorts of opportunities for us every day. Truly, our ancestors and history itself are a testament to
to the fact that God keeps this world spinning no matter what is thrown its way. Life is good even when the road gets rocky, thanks be to God. So keep on keeping on, keep on loving, keep on laughing, dream confidently, seize the day and have fun. No matter what tomorrow or next year may bring, may we all be convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And now I want us to shift gears and in that tone of hope for our future, um, we are eager to give back to the community. And we think of the many gifts and um, the time, talent, and treasure that we have to share. So it's in that spirit that we asked um, to collect our tithes and offering at this point. And as always, a reminder that you can give online. And now we ask that you'll join us in the old hymn, Blessed Assurance. overshadow all that you do. May knowing your future hope in Christ motivate you today to live out your hope daily as you walk through our numbered days upon this earth. May you be humbled at the task before you, following Christ and letting your light shine. May the Holy Spirit enable you to have such strength. And when the trials of life come to you, May you cast each anxiety and care upon Christ, who is strong enough to bear them. May God's unending love, in this world and in the next, strengthen you and help you to stand in the day of trouble, if not by delivering you, but by placing sisters and brothers on either side of you to lift you up. Continue forward in hope in this day and in all days ahead, and may the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up God's countenance to you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>